My name is Kelly Johnson, and I'm the Executive Director at Hartfields Assisted Living in Easton. And I'm here to talk about how nutrition and a healthy you will, of course, lead into being a healthier environment and a happier caregiver. And a healthy you is a happy you. So nutrition is very important in that. Um, I'm going to, I'll be quick, I promise, because I don't want to stand in front of us and lunch. But I truly think that nutrition is one of the first things we overlook from a caregiver perspective. We talk a lot about caregiver fatigue, caregiver burnout, what it means to be tired, what it means to be depressed, what it means to be isolated. But we don't talk a lot about what nutrition plays in that piece for the caregivers. We are seeing so many more people stay home. They're staying home longer. They're staying home when they might be sicker. They're staying home with advanced forms of dementia. And it really puts a stress and a burden on our caregivers. Now, the first thing we always talk about is proper nutrition for our failing family members, parents, spouse, children, whomever. We need to talk about what are they eating? Are they getting proper nutrition? Are they, getting, are they gaining weight? Are they losing weight? Are they dehydrated? We never talk about the caregiver. What are you eating? How are you drinking enough? Are you getting three meals a day? And Lord, if you're lucky, is it hot? So you have to always think about yourself. I am a mother of two small little girls, and I'm pretty sure I haven't drank a hot cup of coffee or ate a hot meal in two and a half years. Um, so take that times 10 when you're caring for a loved one. There have been very brief studies on nutrition, how it plays in the caregiver role and how a lot of these caregivers that we're seeing are getting chronic diseases because of poor nutrition. That they are then having to go into the hospital, they are then being removed from the home, they are then maybe having to go to rehab because of diseases that could have been prevented from proper nutrition. It's a very small window of research that is being done on this. Most recently, NIH conducted a study and there was, the number was pretty drastic. It was 65% of people who are actually caregiving at home are getting improper nutrition. 65%. That's, an, that's an, an amazing amount of people. So if you think about that, you can probably put yourself into that category. You're either grabbing a handful of something that's in the pantry, you're throwing in a microwavable meal, you're going through a drive through on the way home from another appointment or another meeting or another hospital, and you're not sitting down and actually eating properly. You're not eating a full course meal. Um, and now with the holidays approaching, you're dealing with the stress of maybe having to go somewhere, cook everything yourself, get everything together, and you're the last one that gets the plate, and you're the last one that normally eats by yourself at the table. So we have to really make sure we're taking care of ourselves from a nutrition standpoint. Most notably, um, and this is actually coming out of France, there is a huge conference coming on in 2020 in Toulouse, France, and it's specifically about nutrition, and specifically about nutrition and caregivers. And Europe is a little bit more ahead of the curve than we are here in the States. They are noticing that they have more and more people who are getting sick. They are, have more and more people who are elderly that, have our, that they don't have the resources, notably, that we have in regards to assisted living or long-term care communities. They are all staying home, and they're noticing a huge uptick in the caregivers who they're seeing in their hospitals, their doctor's offices, and all these people that were not sick before, they're seeing a huge influx, and they're relating it back to poor nutrition. And they're relating it back to all of these people who were not caregivers before have turned into caregivers and now they are not taking care of themselves. So that is a huge turn of events that we're seeing coming into 2020. I'm hopeful that the United States will put a little more funding and research into that as the years come on because we need to take care of ourselves. I think the whole theme of today is how do we care for ourselves to take care of the people that we love so much. If we don't take care of ourselves, we're no good to anybody else. We constantly talk about it. We constantly tell ourselves that, but we still don't do anything. <laughs> we still don't help ourselves. One of the best things you can do for yourself is proper nutrition. You have to make it a 
point to sit down and eat a meal for yourself. You have to make sure that when you are buying your loved one something, when you are cooking and preparing a meal because you know how it is important for them to get proper nutrition, you're doing the exact same thing for yourself. So we take that very seriously in um, our community. It's one of our main pillars of our entire mission is food and dining. We see food and dining as comfort as opposed to just uh, sit down and eat a meal. When you sit down and eat with somebody, we center our good times almost around food. You think about holidays, you think about going out with your friends, you think about your first date. Most of the time it took place over a plate of food. It took place over a meal. So all of those things come back to you when you're sitting down and you're eating. And all of those things bring about good memories, they bring about positivity, they br normally bring about stories, laughter, good times, all of that relates to food. I myself love food, you, I can't get enough of it, uh, uh, much to my dismay. Um, but I truly feel that sitting down and eating together is, is a massive part of who we are as a culture. And we have to make sure that we are doing that for ourselves. So today we've prepared some food for everybody here. Um, nutrition wise, we always try to go on the side of healthy, uh, also delicious. Um, we have a cranberry walnut chicken salad with croissants. We have a cilantro lime grilled chicken. We also have two different salad options for you. One of them is called our cottage salad filled with different nuts and berries and grains. Um, we also have a fresh fruit salad, and we also have my personal favorite, which are lemon cooler cookies, um, white chocolate and coconut and lemon. I don't think you can go wrong with that combination. Uh, so we do have that available today. And so I urge you to please make sure that you're always thinking about yourself when it comes to nutrition. You're thinking about yourself when it comes to sitting down and eating. Please, I know it's so much easier said than done, Resist the urge to pop something in the microwave. Resist the urge to run through the drive through Resist the urge to be the last person who gets the plate and sits down at the table. I know there is so much going on every day for everybody in this room. I thank you all so much for doing what you do and being the caregivers that you are because it is not an easy job. Um, I vividly remember my grandmother was the caregiver for my grandfather. Um, I'm going to shout out Compass Regional because they actually took care of both of my grandparents in the end stages of their life, so I thank you for that. Um, but my grandmother was the caregiver for my grandfather, and he had uh, cancer, and he had hospice in the home, and she was taking care of him every day, night and day. He got to the point where he wasn't sleeping well at night, and she was up with him. My grandfather lived until he was 92, so my grandmother at this point was 90 taking care of him, being in the home. We were there every day. We always focused on Pop-Pop. How's Pop-Pop doing? Is he okay? How's Pop-Pop? How's Pop-Pop? And all of a sudden, it got to the point where no one was asking about Nana. Nana, as the caregiver, was not being thought of. Nanda, who's 90 years old, with double knee replacements, was home taking care of her ailing husband of 65 years. We weren't talking about Nana anymore until all of a sudden, Nana was in the hospital. Nana had dehydration, Nana had lost a significant amount of weight, and Nana was exhausted. And it had made us all stop and think, there is another person in this house as well. Not that we didn't love her, not that she wasn't just as important as my pop-pop, but when you're taking care of somebody who's sick, when you're taking care of somebody who's passing, you forget about the person doing the caring sometimes. And we really had to put a support system in place for her. And that included bringing home meals. That included going into the refrigerator and taking everything out that was those terrible, microwavable, lean cuisine, cup of soup, <laughs> whatever else question mark ingredients were in that, in that refrigerator or that freezer. We had to clear that out. And no sooner did we do that, and we started rallying a little bit more as a family to take care of my Nana, who was the caregiver, she bounced right back. You know, she lived with us for another three more years, um, God willing. So, but we had, if we hadn't have kind of stepped back and saw that, and unfortunately, the wake up call was her going into the hospital, it probably would have been a different story. And a lot of it centered on her nutrition. The things that brought her to the hospital were not a fall, it wasn't a chronic illness. It was something completely related to proper diet and nutrition. 
And so in order for us to maintain and go at the speed that we're always going as caregivers, we have to sometimes step back and think about ourselves. So I leave you with welcome to the dining of Hartfields, and I hope you enjoy your lunch, and I thank you so much for letting me be here, and uh, have a wonderful rest of the conference. Thank you.